what uh, I like to talk about is just uh, you know, the uh, distillation of, of the talks, what we've heard before, uh, merging technologies and how this is uh, applied or, uh, or have been applied in the, uh, uh, in the laboratory system. So the, the, the role of the diagnostic laboratory in supporting um, the uh, animal health, public health, and food safety system, and uh, toward the in general, not only for a state, but uh, for the national veterinary services. So I uh, listed down most of the, uh, uh, the core services of the veterinary diagnostic la laboratory. One is, is effective surveillance and early warning system for emerging and foreign animal diseases. Uh, I think that's the essence of why the diagnostic laboratory is there. Um, and also surveillance of diagnosis <coughs> and surveillance and diagnosis of endemic diseases which otherwise cause economic loss um, uh, for uh, the state or the, the nation, as well as uh, public health uh, and the environmental toxins, animal, human, and the wildlife interface. And another component, very component, a very important component is the real-time data capturing and sharing to the regulatory agencies. Uh, we can diagnose the disease um, and we can detect the disease, uh, but if we don't uh, share that with a, a regulatory agency uh, so that they can implement uh, quarantine, isolation, that's, that's uh, 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 very important. And also um, with this reporting, dissemination, uh, research and outreach. Development and validation of new laboratory uh, tests uh, and that is uh, a continuous thing within a laboratory because new diseases are always uh, uh, discovered and we need to develop a test for those. Uh, laboratory quality program uh, uh, which is um, consists of the training records, auditing, administration, so proficiency testing, uh, and also meeting national, international uh, uh, laboratory accreditation requirements. And uh, the last part is laboratory networking. Um, most diagnostic laboratories in the U.S. are part of the NAL. Uh, FERN, the Food Emergency Response Network, uh, American Association of Veterinary Laboratory Diagnosticians, uh, and the local public health uh, labs and CDC and FDA. Um, I gave a talk about uh, diagnostic laboratory uh, uh, the role of diagnostic laboratory system uh, in Africa a uh, couple of years ago, and I was talking about food, uh, you know, foreign animal disease. For them, that is a new thing because foreign animal disease is there. So what they call it is, I think, transboundary animal diseases because they just, you know, the borders are usually porous, and animals just migrate from one country to another. And by the way, the Europeans also use that, the trans-animal, trans-animal, transboundary animal diseases. So the definition for, from FAO is that those diseases that are of significant economic trade and or food security importance for a considerable number of countries which can easily spread to other countries and reach epidemic proportion and where control management, including exclusion, requires cooperation between several countries. I think that's what we call it FAD here. So, 
a core service of a laboratory, one of the core services, as I mentioned, I listed down, is the early warning system of the foreign animal disease or transboundary animals. We are the ears and eyes of the regulatory agencies because the practitioner brings samples to the laboratory and we look at it and that is you know, the, the warning if it is uh, a foreign animal disease especially so that immediate and prompt action is taken. Um, just as an example, CEM, uh, contagion equine uh, metritis, uh, just an astute microbiologist, in a, actually she is a pathologist, uh, just uh, on routine uterine culture, she identified CEM, teleorella. So because she, she noticed it's you know, a negative organism, uh, area and she did the bio and it turns out to be Teleria, uh, which um, really uh, uh, was the reason then for the regulatory agency to investigate uh, that uh, particular mare and found another uh, stallion which was positive and then from there I think we had about Four, two, 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 two more trace, trace back. So uh, this this uh, kind of thing is just you know routine, but it can become a, a hot issue. Uh, FMD, of course, uh, we don't have it, but we always you know jump when we have any vesicular disease on that, and we need to you know to rule out that it is. FM, it's not FMD. Uh, African swine fever, African horse sickness, uh, these are all foreign animal disease. And also uh, testing for high impact diseases. Uh, these are the um, avian influenza, of course, um, the subtyping H5 uh, and H7. And the swine influenza H1N1 uh, and the subtyping of H1N1 as well. And uh, the paramyxovirus, you know, the uh, exotic Newcastle disease, uh, the classical swine fever, rinder pest, African swine fever, foot and mouse disease. So the laboratory now, uh, because of our collaboration with NAR, we can test for all these diseases. So um, one, one of uh, the biggest is foot and mouse disease, uh, which is uh, considered by some as cheetah of infectious disease because it spreads like fire or runs like a cheetah. Uh, the economic impact is uh, recently reviewed uh, on a paper in the Journal of Veterinary Diagnostic Investigation by Carpenter et al. Uh, the, uh, the estimate is if there is a 7 to 21 days delay for detection, the, the impact would be 2.3 to $69 billion. And this can increase per hour uh, Infecting, like if it infects 2,000 2, animals, that would come to uh, uh, a loss of $565 million within 21 days. So it's, uh, so, it, you know, early detection is can stop and it, it, it matters, you know, between 2.3 and $69 billion. Um, and the look-alike diseases, which are also very important. So um, these are, we have developed a panel with our, within our system. Uh, we can look for uh, all the vesicular diseases, including the uh, BVD, uh, the ovine, caprine, vesicular, ovine, respiratory, and uh, some of the skin as well. The laboratory is also um, 
required to fulfill regulatory uh, demand sometimes. Recently, uh, the California Department of uh, Agriculture came and asked our chemists, uh, we need to look for these uh, drugs, 26 of them, panels in milk. So our chemists came up uh, with uh, a, a trial, uh, which was these drugs, about 26 of them, were uh, sorted out by FDA. FDA has done this in its laboratory. So the question was, is the milk sample positive after the spiking? Yes. Uh, they did the LCMS, and uh, they were identified at the tolerance level, uh, one time, two, thousand, two times the tolerance uh, for each drug, and uh, they essentially replicated what the FDA labs did. So uh, when we have this kind of request, or there is a, a suspicion of this one of these 26 drugs in the milk, the laboratory uh, can uh, respond appropriately uh, in detecting this. Uh, other core services in the laboratory is um, the, uh, uh, in the animal health and food safety emergencies. Uh, you all are familiar with the, the uh, melamine in, in meats. Uh, antibiotics, uh, penicillin G in milk, and other dairy products, chloramphenicol, and uh, for it in animal feed. So I am giving you some examples of what happened within California alone. I am sure it happens in other uh, states. Uh, these are real examples uh, of what uh, the role of the laboratory is and how we respond towards those events. Uh, other examples are botulism. Botulism seems to be very endemic, and we see it uh, mostly in uh, dairy cows, uh, usually associated with a dead carcass, uh, usually. Uh, uh, oftentimes, we found uh, uh, dead cut carcasses there, and uh, we were and oftentimes it becomes you know, that, uh, type C botulism in cows. Um, it's, uh, I'll give you another on another slide, and it's uh, uh, very economically devastating when it happens in a big dairy like in California. Uh, poisonous uh, mushrooms uh, led in the rumen, and especially in beef cattle where an old battery or some uh, 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 things were thrown out in the field, cuts access to it and get poisoned. And this has a food safety implication if the meat goes through the uh, uh, chain, the food chain. Uh, Methyl mill uh, pesticide, uh, our laboratory was requested from another state to look at into that, and they found metomil in a salsa, which was maliciously uh, put into a restaurant salsa. Uh, these are some of the examples I mentioned earlier. Um, uh, look at the, since in 1988, uh, we've been seeing uh, outbreaks of uh, toxicosis. Uh, good examples would be uh, you know, the late uh, 25 out of 300 dairy cows, oleander poisoning uh, in dairy cows. Uh, that, that has the potential to uh, uh, be toxic to humans if it goes into the milk, especially. Uh, it's so toxic, a, a leaf of, or two leaves can kill a cow, and that's uh, uh, very potent. And the laboratory can detect that uh, in milk. We developed an assay for that. Uh, botulism, uh, 430 out of 460 cows at one time, they were dead. Uh, for it, uh, this is uh, the... Uh, uh, Human error, the uh, farmer, he thought it was uh, a feed additive, and he put the fertilizer on the feed pan, and within two hours, uh, 167 cows died. 
So Brooklyn algae, botulism again. So this, these are some of the things we encountered in the last several years. Um, another uh, 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 pathogen we did um, investigate in, in early or mid 90s was Salmonella enterated as Phage type 4. Uh, which was at the time was considered a foreign animal pathogen because we didn't have it, although it was uh, been reported previously, uh, previous to this outbreak in humans. So this was um, uh, an epidemiological investigation we've done, which we traced it to a sewage treatment plant, uh, which was upstream from uh, a chicken farm and uh, it, uh, the organism made it into the chicken house uh, through rodents looking for feed. The chickens were contaminated, which, and then the eggs. So we were able to uh, match the, the, pl the plasmid profile between the rodents, the, uh, the sewage, and the egg and the chicken. Uh, so that's... Uh, uh, the most likely cause of uh, the contamination was it, uh, sewage effluent. And we routinely do this uh, uh, veterinary public health aspect of uh, 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 the uh, foodborne illnesses, uh, brucellosis, for example, which we don't have it in California at the moment, but uh, we do uh, see on an abortion panel whenever we do abortions, we uh, make sure we don't have brucellosis. Uh, thank God we don't have it anymore. Uh, tuberculosis, which we are dealing with uh, right now, and we routinely do um, uh, uh, milk culturing for uh, listeria, salmonella, campylobacter, uh, and uh, EHEC, uh, E. coli 0157. So, uh, and also, of course, salmonella. So these this aspects of zoonosis. Other examples of zoonosis could be leptospirosis, avian influenza, uh, rabies, anthrax, and tularemia. Uh, others, <coughs> other areas the laboratory is uh, uh, useful be a dissemination of uh, new information uh, outreach, teaching, uh, and research. Our research in the diagnostic laboratory is most often uh, is uh, uh, related to our field investigation, which a faculty would be interested and in, uh, drive that further uh, by soliciting grant or the demand of the producer. They come, they have a specific problem, and they want to be addressed. And uh, our teaching is not um, as uh, 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 very uh, demanding. Uh, usually it's a resident training or uh, externship or industry and, you know, veterinarians uh, uh, in, the, in, the, uh, in the region. So, um, so, so the... Uh, uh, our creativity lies really between cases, in unique cases. For example, this is uh, uh, an alpaca with uh, a coronavirus, is a, a pneumonia in uh, this alpaca was affecting many, many uh, states and uh, our virologist, uh, in collaboration with other virologists uh, in uh, Texas, uh, they uh, discovered a novel virus, a novel coronavirus in alpacas. And, <clears throat> and uh, the uh, Neospora abortion, which uh, we used to have in the late, early 80s, lots of abortions um, uh, due to this protozoal parasite which it, later on it was cultured and identified as Neospora caninum, uh, that uh, became uh, 
uh, the solution once we knew because there was a vaccine now we can diagnose that disease uh, with sort of immunohistochemistry or, as, uh, or indirect IFA. So that's uh, that is the kind of thing the laboratory can do. New syndromes are described, new diseases are discovered, and that leads to a vaccine production and uh, protection. So. Uh, in wildlife and animal health interface, avian influenza is a good example, which uh, uh, goes across the species. Uh, and uh, uh, horses, pigs, humans, and of course chickens. And then uh, one of our essential component for the laboratories are the laboratory, the laboratory quality program, uh, which is uh, really a structured and document management system. Uh, with this, uh, uh, we can uh, assure uh, our, our clientele, our producers, that the sample is handled in uh, in an appropriate way, and uh, the the result is reliable and reproducible. Uh, and also, it helps us for accreditation uh, with the AVLD or OIE, uh, and also uh, this uh, the quality program help improve uh, and maintain our quality standards throughout uh, our laboratory processes. So being an accredited laboratory, it's, uh, it is helpful that it increases our confidence in the data by providing benchmark for competence, increases client confidence, uh, improves efficiency, increases quality awareness by all personnel, and uh, also sometimes it's a requirement for funding. So I mentioned about data capturing and data uh, uh, reporting system. We have the HLS, HL7 XML messaging, which is uh, a, a unique format uh, which allows us to transmit results either to NAN or to CDFA in a rapid format. Uh, so we are extending that to receiving the specimen from outside, from practitioners or regulatory agencies that, uh, that would be tried for the milk quality program in a uh, in few months, uh, which would be expanded to the routine submission in the future. And also the laboratory networking. Uh, uh, this has been uh, really uh, uh, very uh, uh, useful for us uh, because uh, not only helps us in search capacity, but we are able to use a uniform standard procedures, uh, training uh, equipment, uh, laboratories are equivalent, especially the ones which are within the NAL uh, laboratory networks and all the uh, food emergency response uh, laboratory network because we use the same reagent, we use the same procedures, tra uh, technicians are trained in the same manner. So, and also the laboratory network is helping us also for uh, funding potential. Uh,